Welcome back to Sabercraft.org. My name is Alfred. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover a little bit about how we put together and arrange our fights so that way they can be remixed easily and how you can do this with your own choreographies and your own Saber Club and remix your battles and create what we call a CM library. If you've been visiting us at sabercraft.org, you know that we take chunks of fights and we cut them up into what are called CMs, uh, which are choreographed movements. And then what we do is we remix them and rearrange them in order to build our battles. We'll take any particular uh, type of fight, we'll notate it, and then uh, that notation, we break them up into small chunks and each of these chunks, we rearrange them however we want and we recreate a battle. Well, how do we do that, right? Uh, what I'm gonna show you today is oh, uh, how to build a CM library or a choreography movement library. So as a good prerequisite, it would be a good idea to go to sabercraft.org and revisit some of our lessons. Uh, registering for our website is absolutely free and then you can go to all lessons when you go to all lessons, uh, you should be able to view um, all of the lessons that we have. Again, just registering is free. It's a one-time deal. And then after that, you can just immediately just check out our lessons. Simply by logging in, you can view all the various lessons that we have here with our beginning CMs and then our more advanced CMs. Uh, going to any one of them, it gives you a good review of how we put, how we arrange it together and then our notation system. And once we go ahead and we identify a particular sequence, we give it a name. So in this case, CMA, we give it a score, say one point, and then we have the notation here listed. Um, and then as you go up the CMs, you learn the various ones that we have. CMB, for example, where we, we, we cover different target points. Um, we assign a particular score for that particular CM and then so on and so forth. So now let's say you have a Sabre Choreography Club and you've gone through the trouble of uh, creating your own choreographies for particular fights. You know, we've done the exact same thing. Um, so for example, here in All Lessons, you'll see how we have all of our various CMs uh, listed as A through, uh, at this point, W, right? And then we have other ones, uh, as you can see here on our right-hand side, where it says CM 11 through 14, or uh, CM 21 through 24. So what that's all about is what happens when you have gone through the trouble of creating an entire choreography for an entire battle, and then how you can take that and incorporate it into your own school's CM library. So let's go ahead and let's jump here and let's jump right into it. For the sake of this example, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and say that the name of the school is the Solar Saber Academy. All right. So the Solar Saber Academy is showing various choreographies of various fights that are available either in movies or that have been written by uh, people who are in the school. Uh, they could be based on television, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and what they've gone ahead and done is they've taken those particular battles and they've already created uh, various CMs um, from them. So as you can see here, this particular battle, right, uh, has a number of CMs. Each CM, right, is uh, uh, numbered here, and then they have a, a number of points that they're worth, right? So let's go ahead and let's start from the basics, right? So you have a school, you have a number of choreographies, and you wanna create a CM library for your school. Again, for the sake of purposes of this example, right, the name of the school is Solar Saber Academy, which will create an acronym of SSA, pretty much the initials of that academy, right? Now, uh, each battle, you gotta make sure that you have them done. And then as far as numbering them, what we do is we create a series, right? A series is usually um, a whole number such as this 100 or 110 or 120. And then inside of each series, we have slotted out about nine sequences specifically for that series. So this battle here is a long battle and they've been able to go ahead and uh, cut it up into nine sequences from 101 to 109. So the logic is if the series is series 100, the series starts the following number, 101. 
and it goes all the way to 109. So the next number after 109 will be the 110 series. So now you have the 110 series. And the 110 series starts at 111, goes up to 114. It's a short battle. It's not as long as this particular battle from, from this particular movie. This is a, a, a shorter battle, right? So now what happens to 115, 116, 117, all of these? You could go ahead and you can skip that. You immediately jump to the next number, right? 120, the next series. And again, you start with 121, 122, 123. And this particular battle, as you can see, goes from 121 to 128. Why only up to the nine? Why not just go ahead and complete? Because then what will happen is the next series will be series 111, which that doesn't work. Also, another problem um, is that say you go ahead and you would name a particular CM, CM 100 and then CM 101, 102, 103. What may happen is people may confuse a series for a CM. So is it CM 100 we're talking about or are we talking about series 100? So it's easier to just go ahead and name the series pretty much a whole number that starts a sequence, say 100. Always start the CM sequence with the one and end it with the nine. Uh, very, very few times will a fight go beyond nine CMs and, and, and take up, you know, uh, additional slots. Um, this is a lot to memorize already in one shot. Most likely, uh, the combination of all these CMs is, is perhaps longer than two minutes. And when you're looking at performances, you don't really want to go and have a fight that's going to last longer than two minutes of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because at a certain point, um, it starts all to blend and in, in, in together. Uh, you want to have pauses in between them and such, but that's going beyond the purposes of this video. This video is showing you how you could take your sequences and create a library that you use in your school with. Okay. So, so going back, the, the Solar Saber Academy with the acronym SSA has gone ahead and notated a number of battles. Each battle they've assigned a series to, so series 100 is this particular battle right here that has nine CMs. This battle, uh, which is series number 110, is only four CMs. Um, and actually, I'm gonna change this number right here. Right? Uh, this battle right here um, only goes up uh, eight CMs, right? And it's the 120 series and, and so on and so forth. And you have all these various battles, right? A good way to name these CMs really, really easily for your school and that you can share with other people online is to take your acronym and to take the series number and then take that particular CM and then designate that as one particular CM. So this battle right here, it, it has nine CMs and it starts with SSA 101 and ends with SSA 109. Each CM, so 101, this particular one is a short CM, so it's only worth one point. 102, SSA 102, is one of the longer ones, and it actually may have spins or, or things that, that, that make this a more complicated CM than 101. And that one is worth three points, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. So as you go ahead and you chop up the battle, right? Uh, you designate uh, the, the name of it by calling it the school number, uh, the school acronym, followed by the number of the CM in the series, and then you give it a number of points for each one. So here with the second battle, right, series number 110, we have SSA 111 worth two points, SSA 112 worth two points, SSA uh, 113 worth two points, and SSA 114 worth three points, right? So each one of these is worth these number of points. Now, why is this one worth so much and these are worth less? Well, uh, perhaps these first sections of the battle are pretty same old, same old, right? And they're probably about, say, 15 moves, 16 moves, uh, 13 moves, but this one is probably 25 moves and and the reason why it's 25 is because there's some staff work that it works really well together and and that's why we're we're uh, lumping it together and that's why this particular one is worth three points. So that's that's pretty much how we cut them up and we create an organized series. So if you already have a number of choreographies, just doing this is going to help organize your school to know, you know, what particular lesson you're going to teach on an, on a particular day and you have them all assigned. Also, when you have new students that join and they want to be in a future performance or they want to jump into a particular lesson, you can say, okay, you know, what fight do you want to learn? Oh, I want to learn this fight. Well, you have it all broken down into specific parts that you can go ahead and you can show your class as you go up the CMs and you learn this particular battle, right? So now that we've gotten a our series of fights down, 
Let's talk a little bit about arranging them into a CM library that's easier to use and, and, and to teach others how to do Sabre choreography, right? Um, all right. Let's just say that you've been running your choreography school now for about a couple of years, right? Students come, students go, uh, people get married, they have kids, they go, they come back two years later, they move away for business, they come back, uh, new people move into town all the time. Uh, you have people who are starting all the time, but they're, they're not really serious about it. They just want to try it out um, just for a little while, and then they, they have other hobbies to work on, right? How do you arrange your classes in a way that keeps people uh, engaged while at the same time makes people feel like they're learning something new all the time? The problem with going and trying to teach and build an entire lesson plan based off of fights is, say that each one of these is one particular meet, right, of your, of your school, of your academy. Well, if you meet once a week, right, then that would mean that across the next nine weeks, you're gonna learn this particular battle. The likelihood that someone's gonna be able to attend all nine classes in a row is very, very low. You might have people who are very enthusiastic in the beginning and they learn 101, they learn 102, they learn 103, but then, you know, there's a vacation day and, and the kids gotta stay home. They won't be able to go ahead and they can't come to class, so they skip 104. So now they come and they're now in the, in the fifth class. So they started now 105, they come to the next class, 106, but work gets really hectic for them, so they can't do 107, they can't do 108, and they're back for 109. In the end, what they've ended up learning is they've ended up learning a number of these CMs, and as a result, um, they've piecemealed what they've learned in this fight. So when they want to go ahead and they want to practice later on in the future, uh, they're going to meet other people who may have attended all the classes and they're like, oh, you know what? I don't know 104. I don't know 107. I don't know 108. I don't know the whole fight. So you, they have to go and they have to learn these particular parts or even worse, those people may have missed class 102 um, and class 106. So now you have even more piecemeal. So you have some students who really know the first part of the fight. They know some things in the middle and then, you know, they know one of the things towards the latter half and then they know the end. So in the end, like they don't really know this fight and it becomes very frustrating. So you ended up having like all these students coming in and out. And now um, as you go from lesson to lesson, the situation gets worse, right? Because now you've gone ahead and you started teaching this class. By the time that you've taught lesson number 114, the likelihood that someone's gonna remember this lesson is very, very little. That's just the way things are. So it's how much can you practice and how much can you retain? So here's a solution, right? In the end, trying to learn all of these is gonna be very, very difficult. But if, there, if there's a way that you can arrange this to just focus on the most important parts of these battles, it's gonna make things a little bit easier. So follow me on this one, right? Let's say in this first battle, series number 100, there are a couple of highlights of this battle. Right. You know that the beginning of the battle, everyone knows it from from the movie and they're like, oh, my God, the beginning of 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 this fight is like amazing. And then, um, you know, some particular parts like this part of the battle, it gets epic when, the, the, you know, the character ends up using, you know, this this one spin that it looks really, really good. And then this part of the battle here. Right. It gets really, really epic as well because they're switching between two weapons and one weapon. This part here is not, it's, and it's okay. This part here is okay. And the whole end of the battle is all right. So the highlights are CM 101, 103, 104, and 106. This is the best part of the fight. So these four CMs, you pull them out and you go ahead and you arrange them into your CM library, right? A CM library should go from A all the way through Z, right? This way we're working with the letters of our alphabet, um, and, and you're not inundating them with all these different lessons. We're focusing on just highlights. I'm going to show you the highlights of this battle. Boom. We move on. I'm going to show you the highlights of this battle. Boom. We move on. And that way you can just focus on the highlights of the battle, right? So let's go back to series 100. So these four parts, 101, 103, 104, 106, these are the best parts of this particular fight. So what you can do is you can arrange four letters in your CM library. And then what you do is you name them your school acronym, SSA, followed by a letter, SSAA, SSAB, SSAC, SSAD, right? And you can say, okay, CM 101, uh, SSA 101 is gonna be 
SSA A. That's going to be the first one, right? Uh, this one is really good because it's short. Um, and we should just show this one because if, if, if this is a short CM here, this is a short CM here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call SSA 106. We're going to call it SSA B. So you've assigned it this particular slot right here. Here you can see that SSA A is SSA 101 and it's worth one point. B is 106. It's worth one point. All right. The next two slots, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dedicate this to, uh, to SSA 103 and SSA 104. So 103 and 104 right here, and we're going to call designate them SSA C, SSA D. And each one of them, these have their point allotment here, which it matches exactly these here. So you're pretty much taking the highlights of an entire battle and you're assigning them here to designated spots of your library. You have 26 slots. Use them wisely. All right. So now that you've gone ahead and you, you've taught these lessons and you've said, okay, you know what? The beginning of this fight and the end of this fight are the best part of this particular battle of this particular series. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to designate them SSA E, SSA F, right? You go to the next battle, you do the same thing. You chop up and you say this particular one I like, um, this particular one I like, I like, and then I'm going to go ahead and designate these three G, H, and I, so on and so forth. So what you're building is like a greatest hits. Literally, huh? No pun intended. A greatest hits of your saber battles, all listed here in your CM library. All right. Now, Alfred, uh, why don't I just call it CMA or CMB CD? Well, what's important about the Lumina system is that you keep your school's identity. We don't want to uh, convert you to follow a, a, a universal system that everyone must comply with. No, this is art. So your school already has has built its contribution, so it should be given its name. If three schools are using the Lumina system and they've gone ahead and they've created their own libraries and they're all using CMA, CMB, CMC, CMD, that when the day comes that these people meet each other, these, these schools cross-pollinate, then what ends up happening is, oh, do you know CMA? Oh, I do, but wait, do you know the Solar Saber Academy one or do you know the Sabercraft one? Very complicated. It's very simple if each school keeps its own designated names, right? And then as you share them with the world and people learn your school's CMs, they will know them by their formal titles, SSAA, SSAB, CD, so on and so forth, right? So as you go ahead and you fill in each one of these and you build your greatest hits library, then that's it. You've built your own club's library. What happens in the future now? So you have new students who want to join, right? Where do they start? Do you teach them an entire battle? Uh, not likely. Again, remember, this is nine lessons, nine weeks. This is a lot of commitment, right? But what you can say is, hey, today we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you A. Next week, we're going to show you B. Next week, we're going to show you C. So on and so forth. So you keep going through these letters up, right? As as your as your schedule goes throughout the year. You can even review and say, okay, for the next three weeks, we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on A, and the next three weeks after that, we're gonna concentrate on B to build mastery, right? The good thing is is that your old students will be able to retain highlights of these battles without sacrificing that to learn a new battle. They're focusing just on highlights. It's better to have a person review a particular choreography over and over and build that mastery rather than inundate them with a lot of information that they're not going to be able to retain. What will end up happening is that they'll know this battle really, really well, but this CM they'll be weak with. They'll know this battle really well, but this particular sequence they'll be weak in. And they'll know this battle really well, but these three they'll be weak in. And then if they can't attend as often, this will get worse. But if you focus on these, then you can say, okay, you know what? In our club, we focus on these 26 or these, these 15 CMs that we can at least know that when we meet, after you've learned your, your initial lessons, you can review them over and over, get better and get faster with them. This way you have all your history here, you have all your notations, you can go ahead and you can publish them through us online and share them with the rest of the world. And then at the same time, you go ahead and you name them based on your school. So you get to retain kind of like a like a little like a, a signature and authorship to that particular CM that you're contributing to the Lumina system.
So that's it. It's really not that difficult. You could be any school, any club uh, that already has a number of choreographies. Uh, using this system, you can just cut them up, give them a uh, follow this numerical system, and then you can just inject it into our system and share it with the rest of the world. Anyone who knows our notation system can easily pick it up and they can go ahead and they can use it as well. Which That's what this is all about, sharing. Well, I hope you like this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, be sure to subscribe. If you want to learn more, go to sabercraft.org uh, where you can uh, check out all of our notation. You can see all of our introductory videos. Um, you can uh, review some of the longer battles that we've gone ahead and we've notated as well. We have PDF downloads uh, of them as well that you can go ahead and you can check out. Um, and it's a lot of fun, you know. Go ahead and share this video with your club. And if you've never done anything like this before, I highly recommend just going to sabercraft.org and starting with CMA or subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'll be uploading videos all the time. Thank you so much.